Come on, big dude. Oh, he's getting to be just... I swear to God, I think he can't get any bigger. He does. Subscribe now. Fangs in your face. Well, we're getting ready to start shooting a video today, but of course I've been in here for six hours cleaning and the best was because poop as soon as I'm done. So we got to do this first, but this is going to be a rattlesnake video. So this may apply. <laughs> Come on, big boy. This freaking snake is a tank. What size that bitch? <laughs> Come on, big dude. Oh, he's getting to be just... I swear to God, I'm trying to think he can't get any bigger. He does. All right, big dude, get in there. Now let's pull little cranky mama out of here. You know, Maximus is really, he's a big gentle giant, but this bitch will light you up. She'll bite you in a heartbeat. And that's why I stand back so I can get a right hook on her. <laughs> Come on, big girl. I swear to God, the bigger she gets, the meaner she gets. And she's getting big, too. She's getting to be a big old rattlesnake, ain't she? But, she's very ill-tempered, this snake. I can't even put them in the same thing together, because she'll bite them if she gets spooked. But, uh, anyway, I'm going to clean this out real quick, and we're going to be right back with you. Okay, we've got the the big pile of feces out of there. I'm going to hit this with some hex real quick, guys. But uh, this video today is actually going to be about rattlesnakes. It's actually going to be about Western Diamondbacks. And I want to show you guys some really neat little morphs that were just gifted to me. Can you imagine getting bit by, by a rattlesnake or a viper of any kind and not needing any of them? I mean, just, okay, just take a pill and that kind of counter reacts the venom. I mean, can you imagine a world where that happens? It just may come to fruition here pretty soon. No anti-venom, none of that nonsense. Just take a pill and you're gonna be fine. I've been following this study by uh, by uh, Dr. Laura Albalescu, I think it is. And she's from the Liverpool uh, School of Tropical Medicine. But what's cool is she's, she's actually repurposed a cancer drug and it's a, a marmostat, I think, but, and it, it actually counter-reacted the damn medulloproteins in Western Diamondback venom. And like, and, and now medulloproteins is an enzyme, but medulloproteins, it, 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 it's in a lot of snake venoms, and mainly your damn vipers, you know, I mean, from Africa, Asia, Central South America, you know. But what's cool is, they're thinking they maybe it'll turn this into a, like an oral medication, for an envenomation. It's neat. But they've taken it a step further and found out that adding another, like a second purpose drug, cancer drug, which is a, it's a, I'm, trying, I'm doing this off the top of my head, guys. I read this article the other night. It's a, it's a small, a small cell toxin inhibitor, okay? And it's used in cancer treatments. But the combination of these two drugs is, is actually working even better. And, it, and, and they've been working, trying it with soft scale wiper stuff. It's actually in like the second or third stage of clinical trials of using this. So it's cool stuff, but it's out there in the Twitter sphere now. So y'all can find the article, but, um, but Dina, you can put a link to that article, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But I'll Dina put the link to it, but it's cool. Imagine getting bit by a damn snake and just take a pill. <laughs> I mean, or, or take two pills because She's taking it to the next level, and she's got a whole team, and now there's a bunch of people jumped on this. But uh, it, it's, it's an interesting read. You guys would enjoy it. I mean, some of it's really dry, and if, and, and if you don't know the biology of venom and different things, but it's, it's interesting in a whole. You'll enjoy it. Something to inhibit the metalloproteins in a venom reaction is slick. I mean, me the metalloproteins, the, the only way I, I, I can describe it, the, the, the way I understand it is, like, say, if venom was a motor, 
Middle of proteins will be the gasoline that runs that motor. Okay, there's like there's like 60% of middle of proteins in a lot of venoms. But it's cool as can be, man. And you guys check this article out and read it. I mean, it just may change snake bite everywhere. Because was I mean, you know, according to the World Health Organization, snake bite is one it, it's a world problem, you know, especially in the third world countries where they can't get any venom, they can't get treatment, they're out of range, they're in these small villages working crops and getting nailed by soft scales and down in Central South America, big bothrops and, but this might change things, you know? So it's cool, but check out that article, guys. It's very interesting. I gotta put these rattlesnakes back and we're gonna get moving with this video. <laughs> we're gonna start with Maximus. Okay, we're gonna drop Maximus back in there first. We always put him in first because the little bitch will bite him. But, uh, but you guys get a chance. Read that article. It's, it's, it's interesting. I mean, to be able to take two drugs that are already being used for cancer and repurpose them for something else, especially for a snake bite, is, is interesting. But, uh, come on, big dog. All right, big boy. Oh, he's such a monster. <laughs> he's my special boy. What a rattlesnake, huh? Come on, big dude. All right. He's such a big gentle boy, too. I mean, I've had this animal since he was, he was 12 inches long. There you go, buddy. <laughs> He's a beast, ain't he? But, uh, now time for the, the little witch. All right. Never fails, guys. When we get ready to start shooting something in here, we gotta start cleaning something in here. And that's what you get for going in the house to take a shower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we we left the snake house and went into the to our our house to take a damn shower, and and then we gotta come back and do it all over again. There you go, little girl. I'll have to show you some of her babies. Man, they're, some of them are so electric. They're all beautiful. But what was neat was, with, with the litter she had this year, there's a couple of them that are really eyeball looking, man. There's one that's really dark green, and he's all speckly. And of course, all the other ones are like really bright and yellow and vibrant. But, uh, what you, Gina's holding her, she's going like this. Because they're buzzing and they're being loud. All right, get in there. I don't know if the camera's gonna pick your voice up. It might not. Mm -hmm. All right, but we're gonna move on with this video. What's up, squad? Hey, welcome back to Venom Central. Hey, before we get started, Dan McCarty, Sean Black, thank you, brother, and Paul Breslin. Hey, thank you guys so much for the support that you give us. It really goes a long way here, trust me. Today, guys, we are jumping into something new <laughs> okay we've got i was just gifted oh been what five six weeks um one of our followers he, he's actually one of my friends now he, he, he and not just because he gave me some rattlesnakes but but uh we talk quite a bit um and he's a, he's a west coast snake breeder and he breeds a lot of a lot of uh, native snakes but he but he's really heavy into the uh all the morphs right I call them designer rattlesnakes, and my buddy Slither and Sal, thank you, Sal. He sent me a pair of his captive bred and born uh, rattlesnake morphs, and they're they're actually Crowless Atrox, a Western Diamondback rattlesnake. And uh, he sent me a really cool black one, a melanistic, and a really crazy looking. It's like a purple albino something, but it's it. They're really slick. So we just kind of took these guys out of quarantine. We've had them in quarantine for like. I think five weeks it's been, but they are, they're, they're rock solid, captain bred and born. So we're going to bring them into the main room. Um, I've got to shed off them. They're feeding good. Uh, I was just able to run fecals this week. So I feel confident that they're clean and safe. Sal, hey brother, nothing against you. That's just my protocol. <laughs> but Sal, thank you. These are beautiful animals. But we're going to show you guys our new little additions that were donated to Venom Central. And we're going to teach you a little bit of something about Western Diamondbacks. 
Okay, guys, to start out, we're going to show you our, our new designer, Rattlesnakes, okay? Um, now, these are Crowless Aatrox with Western Diamondback, and we're going to start with Venom, okay? Now, everybody believes that the Western's a good starter snake. I don't believe it is. I mean, a Western bite can be freaking serious, okay? Yes, we got Crow Fab, and it works works wonderful on it, but, you know, but I'll tell you, I mean, it's it's... It's largely hemotoxic, but you know, it actually contains some mild toxins, societal toxins. It's it's hemorrhagic, you know, that's your metal of protease, you know, which is a large part of that venom. But um but this one is the little the little albino, okay? Look at how cute that little thing is. It is just a cute little booger, isn't it? And this is a little female, okay? And this one, um, I I believe Sal told me it was a um uh a bubblegum albino or something. I don't know. And, and oddly enough, I used to breed diamondback morphs. I mean, this was back when the albinos were were like the hot ticket. Albino western diamondbacks were the new thing. You know, this was 20-something years ago. And I I was producing albino western diamondbacks and then the albino eastern diamondbacks. But um, crazy enough story, one of my first venomous snakes was a western diamondback. I mean, I was already into venomous for maybe two or three years, and there was an there was an old cat that lived in my neighborhood, and he was a venomous guy. His name was Ron, and um, I used to go over there and get snakes from him. And I'll tell you something: uh, he had a Western Diamondback. This thing was every bit of six and a half foot and this big around. It was it was big as any Eastern Diamondback I've ever seen, and I had to have that damn snake. And when Ron finally got out of doing snakes. He called me and said, Willie, come get that diamond back. <laughs> but uh, I had that thing for almost 20 years. And, and when I got it, it was huge. And it fathered many litters. Let me tell you, I bred the heck out of that thing. But um, but I'll tell you, um, these little morphs are just adorable. Thank you, Sal. We love them. They are just cool as ice cream. But now, captive care on diamondbacks. They are one of the simplest snakes to keep also. I mean, they're damn near as simple as a copperhead. And... I keep them room temperature, but I give them a nice little warm spot. You know, I'm, I'm going to keep these guys in our rack system. And I give them a little warm spot, 82, 83 degrees. The rest of it's ambient temperature. You know, just 78 degrees. And uh, But I tell you, in the wintertime, I do let them cool off. I let them, you know, I let them get down into the 60s and just leave them there. And just don't feed them for a little bit. Let them just chill out and take a break. And they do well with it. But um, little hide box water bowl, rubbing branch, and they're fine. And what's neat is you can keep several westerns together. They're one of the snakes that den up in big populations. They den up in the hundreds, you know what I mean? And uh, they fare well together. If you keep two males in a cage that's too small, you will see some combating. You will see males fight no matter what. So I used to always keep like a big male with three females, you know? But that's an iconic rattlesnake. It really is. I mean, every old Western movie, anytime you think about the, the damn Southwest, you think about the Western Diamondback, right? But I'll tell you, uh, Northern Mexico, the Western Diamondback is probably responsible for more snake fatalities than any other snake. They're, they're that prolific and that prevalent there. And it's probably the most common damn rattlesnake throughout the whole Southeast. I'm sorry, uh, Southwest. I mean, I've seen hundreds of them in the wild, and their temper and temperament can go either way. Like, this little gal, she's a little sweetheart, okay? This, I mean, she she lets you move her around. You can see this is a female by her, her little short stubby tail. Um, she's a little sweetheart. She, she, she doesn't strike at me. She, she's not, you know, she, she doesn't have a, a, a very um, defensive posture. But the male, when I break the male and show you him, he's a little shithead. He strikes at you. He's full Western Diamondback. Now, I've seen these guys in the wild. I'm telling you, I've, and I've seen hundreds of them. I've seen some that were just puppy dog. Just They'd rather just keep moving slow. They were just chill as can be. Not defensive in the slightest. And then I've seen other ones that were just ballistic. <laughs> I mean, tight coil, up like this, buzzing, repeated strikes. So, they vary in temperament. Some of them are chill. Some of them are little assholes. But, uh, but anyways, this is our little, beautiful little albino. 
and we just love her. She's cute as a button. But what a cool gift, right? <laughs> I mean, for one of my subscribers to send me a pair of his captive born snakes. I love it. Thank you so much, bro. But uh, I'm going to break out the melanistic one, the black one. He's cool. He's really sharp. But uh, we're going to show you that one next, guys. Okay, guys, and this is our new little melanistic Western Diamondback. And I'm going to tell you, this one, this one's a little pisser, okay? This one will bite you. <laughs> he is, he's flighty and he's grumpy, but look at him. Isn't he, isn't he gorgeous? He is beautiful, isn't he? I mean, just the color on this little guy. I mean, he's this really velvety black and, and everything is bordered by these little lights nice bright white scales i mean he is cool as can be but i tell you he's a mean little stinker and look at him he's looking at me right now he's getting ready he's getting ready to strike at me <laughs> oh he'll he'll bite you in a minute but now the melanistic ones um this pair now consists of several different uh morphs I mean, they're, they're heterogeneous for a couple different things. Sal tells me that these things can produce like four or five different morphs in one breeding. So when they get big, I'll go ahead and breed these little some bitches and we'll see what we get. Just to, just to see what kind of colors we get. I mean, the little albino kind of looks like cotton candy. Um, and this one, he's, he kind of looks like midnight a little bit. Our black timber rattlesnake, which y'all midnight went back to the zoo this week. He's back on display, but, uh, We'll see him again. We'll actually go film over uh, on his display at the zoo he's at. But uh, now I'll tell you, I've had some morphs in the past. I used to breed the albinos. But I had some Western Diamondbacks sent to me by a buddy of mine in New Mexico. This was, how I many, what, babe? That was, um, it was 18, 20 years ago. 2000. Uh, was it in 2000? Anyways, he sent me these Westerns he collected, and I had two of them. Now, well, you sent me like 10 Westerns, right? Because I wanted some different bloodlines for my breeding projects. But he sent me, these two were like, they were nothing like I've never seen before in a Western Diamondback. We were calling them lilac. They were just gorgeous. And he said that he only finds these in a certain range. It's this certain area in New Mexico. I said, well, I, I want a couple more of them, you know. But... Back way this is way back when like like the internet was just like getting popular and there was a site called pitvipers.com and I posted a picture of it on there right and another buddy of mine in Florida that used to breed albino eastern diamondbacks he wanted that snake so bad he goes please send me one he goes it's got to be some kind of morph and I'm like the gentleman tells me that these things one range he gets it from they look like this but he offered me an obscene amount of money for it so i sold it to him i kept one and i sold my buddy greg one and he had that snake 24 hours and it bit him and an accident happened and he got tagged by it and it was a big male it was about a four footer this big around but it put him in the hospital for three weeks i mean it, it's just westerns are no freaking joke i mean they got a hot bite but it was a big mean bastard <laughs> and it lit him up and and i didn't know about it till months later i i, I talked to him i say hey, how'd that snake i sent you he goes good he goes it almost killed me but it's doing good <laughs> the westerns guys they make great captives and they breed readily in captivity i mean i've bred them a bunch of times and and i tell you with breeding them maturity is usually at about four to five years old that's what i used to hold mine off till and but i tell you i know other guys that say that that that, that they're reproduced at three years old and just because you see a snake large doesn't mean that it's sexually mature but i I've, I've always waited till they're at least four to five years old i mean i actually put them through a little cool down i knock them down for a couple months take them into the 50s and low 60s and just leave them be and you get babies every year now i've had westerns breed in the fall and i've had them breed in the spring and for some reason the ones that bred in the spring would always drop their of course always drop their babies in the fall but the snakes that bred in the fall and they ovulate in the spring and have their babies the following fall for some reason the latter the babies were always more in quantity and bigger i don't know why and their diet mice and rats but in the wild these things these things eat everything they'll eat as neonates, they'll eat, you know, probably other reptilian fare, 
But the babies here, we're giving them fuzzy mice and hoppers. They've been known to eat damn rabbits. Westerns can get big. My first Western Diamondback was a monster. I've still never seen one as big as him. Like I said, it was a true six and a half footer in this big round. It was a beast. But they can get sizable. I mean, they can be a big rattlesnake. They can take rats, squirrels, rabbits. I've seen one eating a dead dove. It was it was a, a damn roadkill dove. It was eating a dove. <laughs> and it was blowed up and stinky. I've actually seen pictures on the internet of them eating roadkill fair so they'll scavenge too you know but prolific as can be but i'll tell you them freaking roundups them rattlesnake roundups don't get me started on that shit the whole premise behind them rattlesnake roundups is is you know we're, we're clearing the area for safety reasons and all that which is we all know that that's a crock right because every year them guys gotta go out further and further and further to find snakes you know you knock down a den site, it's not like a new one's going to rejuvenate and be there in two years. It takes years for a den site to establish, you know what I mean? I mean, some of them den sites may have been there for hundreds of years. They can be wiped out. I mean, even though they've been doing some of them like Sweetwater and some of them other roundups been going on for 30 years or not longer, but they don't have as many rattlesnakes as they started with. And they're going out further and further to find snakes to do that show. So hopefully someday they'll 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 get a clue and they'll stop that. You know what I mean? And and oddly enough, in some states rattlesnakes are protected and, and they enjoy protection. In other states, you can kill them and eat them, do whatever you want with them, you know. And uh it's messed up. <laughs> it really is, because this guy is an apex predator that fits in the ecosystem that keeps things in check. And not only does it keep rodent populations and different things in check, you take something out of the ecosystem and things start going awry. But it's also a food source for birds of prey, for other animals, you know, so it's got a niche and we need to not mess with that niche. Fortunately, captive propagation, and I'm gonna tell you something, the whole thing with zoos and their breeding projects and everything, a lot of your venomous captive propagation is the private sector. And there are guys out there that are not AZA that are so skilled at breeding venomous snakes. And without them, there are some species that literally would be gone. Literally, our eastern diamondbacks. We used to be able to see quite a few of them here in South Carolina, but now you're lucky if you see a couple a year. And Georgia, you can still just go ahead and kill them. Uh, Florida, they're protected, thank God. The guys that are captive breeding, they're going to be our future for the venomous snakes. And like all the stuff that we captive breed, we put stuff with labs and facilities and venom things. We don't breed them for the pet trade. I do offer a few snakes to other serious breeders because I know they do the right thing with them. The Western Diamondback, cool little rattlesnake. The Crowless Atrox. These are our new designer rattlesnakes. <laughs> but we love them. They're cool. Thank you, Sal, so much, brother. Hey, if you're new to the channel, hit that V logo and subscribe now. And come on back and check us out at Venom Central. And you'll see more of these guys. <laughs> and hear more of these guys. Hey, this is Willie. We're checking out. Later.